Hello and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea. Let's talk about RVs. Hey, welcome to RV Talk Radio. I'm Rob. I'm your host. And we've had a great week, and we have a great interview for you today. Today's show is going to focus on Dish Network for your RV, and also a little enterprise you may be interested in, in earning extra income for supporting folks that are snowbirds. So I urge you to kick back and listen to our interview in a moment. But in the meantime, let's talk about contacting us <laughs> yes i know i bring this up on every show but don't hesitate to get on our website at rvtalkradio.com go to our contact page and if you have some suggestions or ideas an rv product or service or a service that supports rving please contact us and let us know what you have on your mind we don't mind a bit and we will try to get back to you as fast as possible. We also urge you that if you have some ideas or suggestions for the show, to once again, go to rvtalkradio.com, go to our contact page, and give us a detailed note of what you would like to talk about or like us to talk about. We also can be contacted directly. You can talk to me, Rob, at just rob at rvtalkradio.com. Those emails come directly to me. So please take the time, contact us. We'd love to talk to you. Well, guys, the big news for Sherry and I from RV Travel Quest is as we've been traveling, we've been doing boondocking and we've been going to RV parks and on and on. And we our biggest goal was to keep our overhead down. So we didn't want to sign up for anything we didn't need. But we have noticed that as we've been moving around, the uh, television services have been different everywhere. So when we were up in uh, the Anacortes area and staying in RV parks up there, we actually had cable service at almost every place we went to. Then as we moved down to Bothell, uh, Washington, we found out we had to kind of live off of just the antenna. And that worked okay. We were able to get the primary channels. But then, as we started full-timing and driving out to the coast, uh, we were finding out the RV parks didn't have any cable services at all. So we've been relying on our, our, our antenna on the top of the RV. And we catch some channels, all right. not, But, you know, some places we might have three channels and another place we had 12 channels and all over the place and not necessarily the channels we liked and we do have a few shows we like to watch uh i i will never confess i like scorpion and i like uh uh the <laughs> so oh, there's a few others maybe i shouldn't reveal all my shows but anyway there are shows that we do like to watch so as time has gone on and we got over to central oregon we've uh Taking time to do some repairs, get a few special things. You'll see some videos come out. We've uh, upgraded uh, our bedroom set. We uh, are ordering some little things that we wanted for the RV. We uh, put new silverware in. We've used the same silverware for years and years. We owned boats before we had RVs, and we're actually using some of the same silverware, cheap silverware from those device, those different recreational vehicles. And Sherry and I said, that's it. I've had it. We've actually took the time and replaced that. And, um, you know, so one of the things that have come up is television. So we finally decided, yes, let's get a satellite system put into the RV. And so we put a lot of thought into it. And there's a lot of really cool stuff out there. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that if we we're going to get satellite TV, one is we got the shows that we wanted. Two is nothing is more irritating than to spend the money to have dish TV and have an antenna on your roof. And then only to find out that you've got this really nice RV spot, but the trees are blocking your signal. 
So we wanted to make sure that our satellite receiver, uh, the physical receiver uh, that's outside, was mobile. So we went with a model called a Tailgater 2. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that because I was lucky enough to be in Central Oregon with a dear, dear friend of mine from 17 years of friendship who's taken care of a lot of my services when it comes to putting in Dish Network. And uh, so when I, of course, when I decided to set up our Dish, the first thing was to call Scott White's Whiteside. And the name again is Scott Whiteside. And he has been in the business for years. And there's nobody I would trust more. I don't care where I was at, whether I was in Oregon, Washington, or down in Arizona, I would still call Scott for setting me up because I trust him and he saves me money. He will not suggest anything I don't need. And even if it's a uh, less commission to him, he's, he'll take care of you. He, he's just ethical, plain old ethical. So the other great thing about Scott is I found out he had a very interesting business. And the business pertained to people that were snowbirds leaving the area. It wasn't something that RVers got. It's something that RVers receive that need the service. And I'm not going into detail because I was fortunate to sit down with Scott and not only do some video interviews with him, and we did two interviews with him on video. One is about just Dish Network, and the other one is about his business. And then he was l nice enough to sit down with us for RV Talk Radio and actually go through the whole thing again. So I, I commend Scott for uh, sitting down and going through all these uh, questions and answers that um, we put him through, and he did a great job. So on this show today... We are fortunate enough to have Scott on our show. So in just a moment, we're going to give that interview to you. So on to the next subject, first of all. So before we start the interview coming up here with Scott, I want to kind of give you an idea what I want to talk about in the next show. And it's going to be one of those maybe bum you out, maybe not bum you out, but it's going to be a show to talk about more detail about being prepared to actually come out here on the road to be an RVer. And I want to just talk about, and the subject keeps coming up, and I know that my view probably angers a few folks, and I don't mean to, and maybe it has to do with my age. And, you know, I have, my kids are in their 30s, if that tells you anything. I'm not extremely old, I don't think. I, I just hit 55. But i been hearing, and I, I got pulled into a hangout the other day that asked me about what I thought about these guys going out and their rigs are breaking down and they're having all this stress. And, uh, and my answer kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm sure would make some folks angry, especially young folks. And it comes to being prepared to come out here in the first place. It's like buying a house and not having insurance, really? Or having a, a rental, which they won't even let you have one without homeowner's insurance. Why in the heck would you come out and be a full-time RVer and not be, be prepared for a your rig to break? or your truck, or, or if you're a motorhome, you're gonna have issues, engine or with the motorhome. If it's a fifth wheel or trailer, it's gonna be the truck or it's gonna be the trailer. I don't care if you got a new rig or an old rig, you're gonna have some problems. And so I'd like to get into that in more detail and it'll probably be a show that'll probably get a few folks kind of perturbed and I don't mean to, and maybe it's, old age, I don't know how <laughs> I use that excuse. But I want to talk about things like having money prepared for emergencies, uh, maybe talking about extended warranties, um, or some kind of programs that could help you 
be prepared, whether it's uh, tire services, uh, towing services, uh, warranty services. And I'm going to share a lot of my stories of how uh, disasters have happened. And they're not disasters. They're uh, <laughs> opportunities, <laughs> obstacles. That's all they are. But if you're prepared and have a way of knowing that that will happen and when it happens you have a way to address it and move forward again it's not that bad and it's um i just i'm seeing over and over and over again and being asked of rob what's your opinion about that and i'll say well if they lost a transmission or blew out a clutch or something that happens to all of us. No biggie. And so we just fix it. Well, that might be that word fix it or get it uh, taken care of is defined a little differently by different folks. If I blew a transmission, I would just get the fit transmission fixed. Just that easy. Uh, how? Uh, it's either by having money prepared or having a extended warranty or things like that. That's the kind of stuff I want to talk about next week. And so I, I want to put a little thought into it. And uh, what I reason I'm bringing this up is I want you to the listener to start shooting your opinions and ideas about being prepared to come out in the road full time in an RV. And I want to hear from every age, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, retired, what do you do? What happens and how do you address problems with the RV or the vehicle or towing vehicle? Are you prepared? What have you done? What's some ideas? And let me pass them on to other people. But I also want to address the folks that are not prepared. And you may not like to hear our opinion um, or our ideas to, because if you're five states away from your hometown and you are in trouble, that's scary. I don't care who you are. And if you don't have something ready for something like that to happen, you could be taken advantage of very easily. And if you've got a channel or maybe you're reporting your um, your viewers um, don't need to be the victim. Let's put it that way. And uh, so those are the kinds of things I want to talk about. And I know it's going to be one of those controversial kind of shows. And I apologize. It's not that way. Just, just so many people get, that are so excited to come out here. And we want to make it a pleasure to be an RVer. And to be a beginner, a disaster can happen right away in the middle or maybe hardly at all. It's a lot of preventative stuff that we want to share with you. So that's all I have to say about that. But please contact us with your opinions, folks. Get on our website or get, uh, wherever, or whether it's YouTube and you're hearing this show, give us your opinion on that. So the next thing I want to go on to is our interview with Scott Whiteside. And the first thing we're going to talk about with him is the Dish Network, and he's a representative for them and an installer. And then after that, he's got a business that he started a few years ago that I want him, he's going to share with us that doesn't necessarily benefit him either, it'll benefit you. So this show is really worth listening to. So kick back, and here's the interview with Scott Whiteside. Well, hello, this is Rob from RV Talk Radio, and today I have Scott Whiteside from Central Oregon. And we're going to talk about two subjects today, and Scott's a good friend of mine, and his main business is Central Oregon Satellite Solutions. And we're going to talk about what he did for me and some things that he'd like to pass on to you. After that, we're going to talk about Central Oregon Snowbird Services which is a service he provides for people who are snowbirds. So this isn't necessarily a, a thing for RVers as it is a service for RVers that snowbird. So we'll go into that later in the show. So Scott, welcome. 
Good to have you back in Central Oregon, Rob. <laughs> yeah, the, a lot of our listeners know this used to be my old home. So we met 17 years ago. 17. Yeah, so uh, we both managed to survive all this time. Barely. Yeah, so we both have... We both have quite a few war stories, don't we? <laughs> few war stories from Central Oregon. <laughs> That's right. So, what just happened this week is I had, um, Sherry and I, you know, we uh, started the RV Travel Quest, and uh, we started finding out that the RV parks that weren't in Washington, we thought a lot of them would have cable already. Well, it didn't turn out to be the case. And so we'd go to these RV parks or boondock. And we'd have to rely just on our antenna. And that was a 50-50 chance if we got anything. Or some cases we only had maybe three channels and maybe in other places maybe uh, 12. But, you know, we were missing shows that we really enjoyed and things like Travel Channel, Discovery, History Channels like that. Uh, obviously, we came from a house, so we had that kind of service on cable. So finally, we got down to Central Oregon, which is uh, Sherry's place and we're gonna uh we're kind of hanging out longer than normal so we're kind of addressing all the different um things that we want to fix or main or, or modify in the rv before we start traveling again and one of them was television so we decided well i think we need to go to satellite again so of course without a hesitation i called scott and scott is the guy to talk to so before I um, let this complete uh, go completely here, um, Scott not only can maintain and set up accounts for people in Central Oregon, but if you're thinking about either adding satellite to your coach or to your RV, and you already have one at home, he can help you with that. And if you're just starting from scratch, he can help you with that, even if you're out of the area. Is that true? That's correct. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, I want to tell everybody kind of, of the system that Sherry and I went with. We went with, and I, I haven't asked you this question yet, yet, but we went with the Tailgater 2. What's the difference between the Tailgater and the Tailgater 2? Is that a recent change? Yes, recent change. The Tailgater 2, um, it says that you can run two different satellite boxes off of this dish at the same time. The, sat the Tailgater 1, uh, you could only run one. Oh, gotcha. the, the problem with that is, is that that is correct. You can run two boxes off of it, two 211 receivers from DISH. But the problem is that both channels you're watching have to be on the same satellite. You use three satellites in the sky oh. whenever you use a DISH system. So if you try to change channels on one of the boxes and it's not on the satellite that you were currently watching and the other box is watching, it will screw up one of the TVs. And it doesn't happen very often that that's, that works for everybody. So if you do that, be prepared for possibly some frustration level yeah. in the learning curve. Most people are perfectly fine with having one box with one channel at the same time, um, in a building as small as your RV, yeah. and you, you don't have as many hassles if you do that. And that's exactly what Sherry and I did. As if we're watching a television show, typically if we go to bed and we still want to watch a show, we're typically are either watching a show already and we're just continuing into the bedroom. Uh, we just have no need to have two different boxes for two different televisions. Right, and most coaches are mm -hmm. wired so that you can do that very easily. Yeah. You can have the same thing going on in both rooms at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can be watching a local antenna in one room while you're watching this satellite in another room. No problem with that yeah. whatsoever. And that's exactly what Sherry and I did. And uh, the other thing is, the reason we went with the Tailgater 2 is we've dealt with, uh, the, what do they call the King Box? King Dome. King Dome Box, uh, which was on a motorhome before, which is fixed and it was uh, mounted on the top of our RV. Which was great, worked a lot of times, but if you get under a tree or get in a building in a way... That was absolutely useless to us. So we wanted the tailgater two um, not attached to the RV, and we have a twenty-five foot co co cord on it, and we can move it anywhere in the uh, area to have a better chance of connecting to a satellite um, because our satellite's not fixed in one place. So that's why we chose that. Um, now uh, there's drawbacks to everything. 
So what's the biggest drawbacks between a mobile satellite system and say a fixed one with uh, that is some of them, the larger ones that are mounted on top of an RV or just the ones that are at home. What am I giving up? And, and I know what I'm giving up, but I like to have you kind of tell our, our listeners, what, like, what am I giving up? Well, it isn't a lot with these systems now because with the type that goes on top of your coach, literally you pull in and you level your coach and you hit a button. And by the time you have the awning out and the coach leveled and a cocktail made, then your TV is ready. The only difference with the tailgater is that you actually have to take it out and hook it up to the cable going to the side of your coach. But it's really that simple. You, you do that. You come in and you power on your satellite box. It reads that it's hooked up to the tailgater. Mm -hmm. And the first question that pops on the screen is ask you what state you're in. So it has a reference point as to where to start. You answer the question. And again, 15 minutes later, it's pointed itself, and you're done. Yeah, and it, um, so I, I noticed when, uh, and we'll, we'll get more into depth of that, but I noticed since I have a tailgate or two and I'm traveling, um, some of the systems that we couldn't go with was the, the hopper or uh, basically the on-demand type of programming, and why was that? Correct. The only receivers that will work with your tailgaters are the 211 line of receivers they're a standard high definition box um the hopper any of the other advanced receivers require a different kind of dish the kind that you could put up on top of the coach um to work uh you can turn your 211 into a dvr by adding a specific kind of external hard drive mm -hmm. which will allow you to pause live tv and record programs while you're gone nice nice so um that's basically my biggest difference is be, uh, between having the, the tailgater and, and, say, a more modified or a yes, more, that's correct. more advanced uh, satellite then. Yes, and the tailgater is the only portable dish system that will provide high definition to your equipment. Uh, Direct TV, you have to have one that goes on top of the coach because of the kind of satellites they use. Uh, there are some cubes out there that will work with Direct TV but it will not provide you with high definition service through direct TV. Dish is the only one that has that capability through the tailgate. Yeah, so I want to remind our listeners is um, you may have a lot of questions between the differences between Dish and direct TV, and you may have some questions about can you maybe add something to your current account already from Dish to your RV. Uh, uh, in our description, everything we're talking about here uh, uh, or as far as references to Scott, is uh, available to you. You'll be able to see his phone number, his web addresses, his Facebook. Everything that uh, we talk about in this show will be in the description. So don't hesitate to contact him. Scott can service people outside of the area. And I don't typically stand behind a whole lot of folks if I don't truly, truly uh, trust them. And I've known Scott for a long time, and I know you'll be satisfied with the way he interprets the information, how he um, presents it to you, and he's always he's always been in my best interest to save me money, and I like saving money, and I know everybody like I like to save people money if I can, <laughs> and I appreciate that a lot. So, uh, whether it's the equipment you're using or what kind of programming you choose, uh, Scott is very informative on all those subjects. So, the next thing I want to talk about is since I have a tailgate or two, and it. And for those of you who are wondering what that looks like, it looks like a Dark Vader helmet. That's what I call it. Yeah. And it's uh, very light. And when you see it, you think it's going to be heavy. It's very, very light. So I have a couple of concerns about it is being that light. If I'm just setting it on a table or setting it on a uh, TV type of table or something, because there isn't a lot of weight there, that thing could blow over easy. Um, and I'm not all that thrilled about just putting it on the ground. So... They do make uh, tripods and different kinds of mounts for that if you want to. And Sherry and I, if you go to Amazon and look for mounts, we're getting a little tripod that actually the tailgater attaches to on the top. Just takes it off the ground a little bit and you can anchor it into the ground. Kind of gives you that peace of mind of it's going to make it a lot harder to steal. <laughs> yeah. And I can lock it up against that and uh, make a deterrent at the same time. To keep it from getting dirty or muddy or depending where you're at 
Um, what's some of the other kinds of equipment you've seen for the tailgater other than just sitting it on a picnic table or on the ground? Well, there are some aftermarket uh, ways to attach it to the ladder on your coach, to a window in a, because these are also great for commercial truck drivers. You can attach it to the window. Uh, and these are the, fir the first tailgater you could not mount to the top of the coach. This one you can. So uh, that's a great way to ensure that it's out of the way. It doesn't get tripped over, doesn't get run over. Um, but they also do make, uh, on the tailgaters, there is a way for you to take a cable lock and attach it so that somebody just can't walk up and, and walk off with your tailgater. Yeah, that's what I like about it. Is I, because of the handle, actually, um, you should be able to put a cable cord yep. right through that. Exactly. So, and that's exactly what Sherry and I are going to do. Uh, so getting uh, moving on to the from the equipment to the service, uh, one of the things that are going on now, and, and by the time you hear this, report it may change but right now dish has what they're calling a locked in prize and i liked it a lot because everybody has the same beef uh, we sign up for a service and as soon as that service is over uh after two a uh, year our price goes up and, there's a, and then something else makes it go up and pretty soon what started out to be a 89 dollar program you're now paying 130 and it just keeps growing uh, what's what's uh, Dish doing right now that it's kind of uh, it, it impressed me and it made me a little more happier to sign up? Well, Rob, currently they're offering a three-year price guarantee. Normally, yes, you would get it for one year at a discount, and then on a two-year contract, and your second year of your contract, you would have to pay the normal everyday price, uh, which is still a good deal in my opinion. But there was a little bit of sticker shock. So now what Dish has done is you still only have a two-year contract, but they are doing a three-year price guarantee. So your bill will not go up, not only for your contract period, but for a year after your contract is over. Nice. And that's completely unheard of. Nobody in the industry does anything like that. Yeah, and that's that was a big thing for me. It, that I'm, I know everybody I know that has to do with anything with television, biggest complaint is it's nothing like when I first signed up. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Yep. Your bills always go up. Yep. And so, uh, anyway, uh, and, and the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was, uh, um, and I mentioned it already on the show, but you can easily support people outside of this area of Central Oregon. Uh, is that true? Oh, I do it all the time. I get phone calls from people that I've sold Tailgater 1s and Tailgater 2s to, or put the systems on top of their coaches uh, from all over the country with questions uh, on how do I do this? What did I do wrong? Um, but a, even if of a new customer, if you want to add a tailgater and a 211 to your existing Dish Network account, or if you want to subscribe and be a new customer, I can ship you the equipment, I can pre-activate the equipment, get it in your hands, uh, give you information on, and, on how to install it, it, which is very simple, there's yeah. nothing to it, um, and do some phone support with you uh, once you get the equipment and you're ready to hook it up. Yep, and just doing the show in between breaks of uh, what we're doing here, um, uh, I saw Scott taking uh, a phone call just to support one of his clients, and this is a Sunday afternoon. So, uh, And they're in Palm Desert. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so uh, uh, he means what he says. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is, and I was kind of impressed, and I'll tell you what happened with us, is Sherry's, we're actually boondocking on Sherry's father's property. He has Dish Network. And so what was really nice, and, and you know, Sherry's folks are getting up there in age, is we were able to give them a little break in their monthly bill of $5 a month because we were able to use the referral program from his Dish Network account. And in return, that gave us, for 10 months? 10 months. $5 off of our account. So can you explain a little bit how the referral program works? You bet. It's, it's the Refer a Friend program. You can call Dish and you can request some certificates to be mailed to you. You can go to the website and log in and you can request that they get emailed to you or you can request they get emailed to your friend. And if that is used during initial ordering of the system, then the referrer gets $5 a month off for 10 months. The new customer gets $5 a month off for 10 months on top of your discount already. And... Uh, anytime you use three of those certificates in a quarter, at least at this time it's three and a quarter, 
Dish has an, a program they call Dish Perks, where you as an existing customer can gain points and get free gifts from Dish for using those referrals friend certificates in a quarter. In the last two years, I've received a free iPad, a free PS4, and a free set of Bluetooth headphones to use with my hopper, all from Dish just for using my referral certificates. <laughs> it's a great deal. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, uh, if you have a friend that has, or a family member that has Dish already, that's a program that you could help your own family out. So the next thing I, uh, Scott pointed out to me was a really clever thing for RVers. So Sh Sherry and I chose the Tailgater 2, and we also have a 25-foot cord with that. And that's the purpose of the Tailgater 2, so we can move it around where our RV space is to make sure that we have an open sky to catch our, the satellite sig signal. So it hasn't happened to us yet, but sure and heck, since Scott brought it up, it's going to happen. And so his idea that he just told me was like a very simple, nothing to it, but really put some, you think about it, it's going to come in handy. But what if you have to take your, uh, your cord and, and go across the trail or go across the road where cars are going back and forth? Will those, uh, those will damage your cable, won't it? Oh, you bet. Yeah. You get yeah. a car drive across a, a standard RG6 cable a couple times. And it will ruin the integrity of the cable. You'll start getting a short. You'll start losing signal until it's completely gone. Yeah. So what was your suggestion? You just carry an old used piece of uh, hose. And, you know, about 15 foot long or so. And if you have to stretch your coax cable across the street to get your satellite dish or your tailgater up and running, you just run it through the hose first, lay it down over uh, the roadway, um, so that if somebody does have to drive over your cable because you had to move the dish far enough away to get away from the trees, then it's protected and you won't suffer any damage and you won't lose any picture. Great. So the last thing I wanted to ask, <clears throat> ask you about was Sherry and I were concerned about, okay, there's some places you go, and I've been in them uh, where I can't get my satellite the hook up, and yet I can still get a signal through my regular antenna. What do you recommend for our viewers that uh, should we keep our antennas where they're active for us to use so we can still get local channels? Yes. Uh, with satellite programming, the federal government tells the satellite provider which locals they can sell to you, um, depending on your home area. So when you travel around, that signal is only broadcast to your home area. Uh, so as soon as you get away from your home area those channels will disappear on your guide. So, um, if you're traveling a lot, you don't want to have to call DISH every time you move to a different city and tell them, well, now I need you to change my address and change my locals to this different area. So we can incorporate your local antenna, which most of the coaches have, right into your system. And those local channels will show up on the guide of your satellite um, for no matter where you're at in the country. Every time you set up a new camp, you just run the uh, the program to to search for the digital off-air channels in your area. And so you've always got the local channels for wherever you're at right there on the guide of your satellite system. Sweet. Uh, hey, before we uh, let Scott go on this subject, uh, what's a good phone number for people to contact you at? You can always reach me on my cell, 541-420-5772. Uh, and you don't have a website, for, but you do have a Facebook page. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, just uh, Central Oregon Satellite Solutions, uh, a search on Facebook, and you'll find me. Sweet, sweet. So, folks, if you have some questions or you're thinking about uh, extending your systems to your RV or you don't have a system at all, I highly recommend. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. I've known this uh, gentleman for uh, uh, 17 years now. So, if you are thinking about it's time to get yourself a television system in your uh, RV or uh, maybe a boat or anything else, give him a call and see if he can help you out. I highly recommend him. So, Scott, I want to thank you very much for your uh, information and uh, for Dish Network and your, your solutions. What I want to do is switch gears with you. And so <laughs> the next thing that Scott is involved in is 
actually a very clever but very necessary service that you provide for our viewers. Is that correct? Yes. For uh, anybody traveling the country in the off season and the winter months uh, here in Central Oregon, we know how cold it can get, and some people just aren't aren't ready for that anymore. <laughs> So, so uh, we have a company, Central Oregon Snowbird Services, and we will check on your property, um, send you email updates, usually from your driveway, letting you know the status of the house, um, and if there's any problems, so that you can feel, have a little peace of mind when you're traveling, that one of the biggest investments you're going to make of your home is safe and sound um, back here in Central Oregon. Yeah, now you guys have a website, it's actually called... Oregon Snowbirds with that's an S. Correct. Dot that's com. correct. Okay, and the same phone number that we were talking about earlier. What's yes, the phone is. number for your business? 541 420 5772. Sweet. And so I have a couple questions for it. So um, basically, uh, if I have a house and I'm going to go to Sayuma for four months, um, what can I expect or what should I be asking or what kind of things are you going to be doing for me? Sure, we'll, we'll take a walk around the house with you before you leave uh, to make sure that it's all secure, it's ready for winter, um, give you some pointers on things that may need to be changed before you leave. And then once you're gone, we'll get on a routine of, of when we're going to uh, inspect your house, and we do an exterior perimeter walk of the house, make sure everything looks good from the outside. Uh, we'll check your, uh, your water pipes, make sure nothing's broken, no problems, nothing's frozen up. Uh, we'll flush the toilets and run the water in the showers because the seals in the toilets that long without having water, uh, can crack and can damage and cause leaks or cause the, the device not to work properly. Uh, we check your heating system, check the windows, uh, make sure the proper lights are on or off depending on what the, you're using. Uh, security systems are set properly, uh, heating and air conditioning systems are set properly, um, we can even water some house plants that are inside that you really don't want to die while you're gone. Um, just anything you can possibly think of to maintain the integrity of your house while you're away enjoying your vacation. Gotcha. And, um, I'm, uh, the numbers are different for every household and stuff, I imagine. But what, uh, typically the numbers you gave me, I'm just going to say, seem to be very affordable and it seems like a service is definitely worth every penny. And so... Uh, do you have at least? Uh, do you are your prices a little different between the size of houses and property? Not the size of houses, the, the location of your property, how far we have to go to maintain, how often you want us to check your system. Uh, most people do either once a week or once every two weeks. Uh, with Central Oregon winters as cold as it's gotten the last several years, we've had some minus seventeen and minus twenty four degree uh. weeks. Uh, I recommend that we visit your home once a week. Um, just to make sure that everything's in good shape, uh, turn different lights off and on, make the appearance of somebody being there, um, drive our vehicles up your driveway and back out during snow conditions. It looks like somebody's coming in. Um, just anything to make sure somebody thinks there's somebody around and I don't want to mess with that house. Wow. That's, uh, you know, those are things that I don't think of. And that's why it's nice to have somebody that's focused on this stuff that, that like tire tracks in the snow. I didn't even think about that, but a burglar would. Yes. So, do you um, uh, maintain pets or livestock? That's a tough one because pets and livestock need to be taken care of daily. And we don't make once a day trips to your home. So, that's more suited for somebody whose profession that is. Somebody local in the area that does pet sitting, taking care of your horses. Um, that's not a position that, that we'll take on. Yeah, and that makes sense. Uh, if I had horses, I probably would want a horse person taking care of exactly. my horses. Exactly, and I'm not a horse person. <laughs> Neither am I. So the, the next thing is, uh, do you, can you or will you take care of my mail or my newspapers? You bet. We can either store the mail in the house, pick it up every time we visit, um, or we can actually forward it to you. Just give us the address where you're going to be located at. Um, and then we, of course, would add the, the shipping charges for that onto your monthly service. Sweet. So... To have a business like this, I mean, takes a lot of responsibility on your part. You're taking care of somebody's property. So what are some of the things you need to have a business like this? Well, you should be, you, you got to have a business license in the state of Oregon to, uh, to have a business. Um, we are fully bonded, fully insured, so that if anything done by us is uh, detrimental to the house or, or you have a problem with, then we're covered and you're covered. So we want everybody to know that we're on the up and up. 
and you're taken care of no matter what happens. Yeah, and that's one of the things, like, uh, the reason I feel so comfortable with Scott is um, Scott's been in business for a long time doing what he does, and he does it right. And um, my biggest worry is people going out there and having people take care of their houses that don't take that responsibility and what could happen if they weren't sort of bonded or, or have liability insurance or, or licensed uh, business, what would happen if something went wrong? Well, many of our clients tell us, hey, I used to have my neighbor take care of this for me. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the neighbor goes out of town for a week, doesn't bother to tell his buddy that, hey, I'm not going to be able to check on the house for a week or two. And then they come home and there's a broken window. Somebody's broken in. There's a broken water pipe. The heating and air conditioning system have stopped working. And now there's a whole lot more damage than what you ever thought would happen. <laughs> and they're not friends anymore. And they're not friends anymore. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, uh, Scott, I want to thank you very much for showing, uh, uh, sharing that kind of business with us. And I'm sure that there may be people out there thinking about doing something like this. But uh, I can assure you it's no simple task. It's one of those things, if you're going to do this right, uh, have a business license, you got to have the insurance, get bonded. Do it right. Um, protect yourself and protect your clients. Exactly. And, and that's what it's all about. And once again, your business is called Central Oregon Snowbird Services. That's it. The phone number is 541-420-5772. And you guys have a website called Oregon Snowbirds with an S. Yes. Dot com. So please visit them if you have any questions. If you live in the Central Oregon area, Please contact Scott. He's uh, worth every penny, and he will protect your property and does it right. So, Scott, thank you very much for coming on the show today. Uh, you got to share uh, not only you know contact Scott for his snowbird services, but if you're interested in Dish, please contact Scott. This is the man to talk to. So, thank you very much for thank being you on much, the Rob. show. So, take care. And we'll talk to everybody else. Thanks for listening, and have a great day. Bye now. I am truly grateful to Scott for doing those two interviews with us. I, I learned a lot. I just, uh, every time I talk to Scott, he just, uh, he's right on the money. He knows what he's talking about. He's been in the business for a long, long time. So it's, uh, one of those things, if it stresses you out and you're concerned about the program you have now or thinking about getting something, Scott is definitely the guy to call. So I was really tickled pink to have him on the show. So I want to truly thank everybody for listening this week. Uh, once again, uh, back in the original subject for next week, I wanted to make sure that to remind you to contact us about your uh, suggestions, concerns, and ideas that pertain to being prepared to actually come out on the road as an RVer. Uh, tips and tricks of uh, having money set aside, extended warranties, things like that, uh, services that you may have used and it was a blessing come true that you were spending the money for that service. Uh, shoot us the notes and send us your ideas and uh, experiences. So I hope that next week is going to be a very educational show and probably get some folks um, riled up a little bit, but our heart's in the right place. And that's what our show's all about. So I want to thank you for listening. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll talk to you next Monday. And we'll have some great stuff to talk about. So have a great day, everybody. Bye now. Mm -hmm.